hey guys um welcome back to my channel so i thought i'd just do this video because if i don't um there's a probability it will never go up um so i had promised you guys my labor and delivery uh story stroke testament testimony testament okay stroke testimony <laughs> so um it's currently 8 30 in the morning i want to have my porridge so i usually have um uh, the first thing when i wake up i usually have a cup of porridge with this big mug uh, my mother in love um brought me a whole um tungi for porridge so that's what i've been drinking and uh, then at around nine um, I know the baby is going to wake up anytime soon, so um, I'm going to change his diaper, breastfeed him, um, have breakfast, then pump milk. Because um, in the morning, I usually have a lot of milk, so I always have to fix a pumping in the morning. So, um, let's start with this. Um, so, where do we start? Um, I don't know if I had mentioned this before, but during my, for me to tell you this story, I have to tell you this first. So at 20 weeks pregnant, I was diagnosed with gestational diabetes and um, it wasn't that bad, by the way. So at first we started with, um, we changed the, what is it called, my diet. Uh, we saw a nutri nutritionist to change the diet um things are going well for like the past i think two weeks then um the sugar started spiking up again as the pro pregnancy uh, continues your sugar levels also go your sugar levels also um a bit spike up if you have uh, gestational diabetes so that is what happened so they put me on um glucophage so I was taking glucophage for the rest of the pregnancy, it helped regulate um, the sugar levels, but you still have to be on a strict diet. Dr. Raj was the uh, second guy that we went to see. Um, the first one, our blood didn't mix. By the way, guys, be very, very strict and... Um, what is it called just look for a gainer that you're comfortable with. It's a long journey to go with someone you don't like. Or someone who don't please your worries, especially if you're a new mom. Um, I know most doctors usually like, ah, you go ask questions, they don't want to answer you. Because them, they've seen these things a million times and you're facing them for the first time. So they like, don't play your worries and your fears and your ETC. So the first gainer we went to see, our blood didn't mix. The second gainer we went to see was Dr. Raj. And um, he, Dr. Raj is really, really thorough. He doesn't uh, sugarcoat things for you. He will tell you reality, but he will also soothen, soothen things for you a bit. Um, he's very thorough in the sense of um, the test that he does. Um, for him, you have to do a urine test every time you go see him so that he checks for infections and everything so that he just catches everything very early. I did my blood work when I was 10 weeks pregnant. Um, so that he can just know what he's dealing with that early in um, the pregnancy. I know most people do their blood work like second trimester now. He's just an amazing doctor. If you're looking for an OBGYN, I would highly advise you check out Dr. Raj. Um, he's at Empisha Hospitals, I think, Mondays and Wednesdays. Then um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, he's at Empisha village market in the afternoon but you have to book an appointment to see him um, otherwise you won't be able to see him if you're just walking so i had to mention that the other doctor that i had was dr nicola dr nicola is also at um Empisha, um the dcc center that is a diabetes um center she's amazing very amazing doctor by the way she's the kind of doctor who um even if sometimes i used to be a bit worried and i would zap her and she will discuss she will sort me out um you don't need to go book an appointment to see her not that i'm saying you do that don't do that please uh, pay your consultation fees and go do that i did that because i had already paid consultation fees and i was a bit worried about something most doctors usually don't respond to you they'll tell you to come to hospital uh, but she sorted me out um while i was at work i was a bit worried about something so those are the two doctors i would highly highly recommend the hospital itself i would highly highly recommend Empisha hospital um it's been a family hospital for us 
every time we get sick, we usually go to Ambisha Hospital. By family, I mean um, my side of the family, not family me, my husband and my son. Um, before getting married, that used, used to be our go-to hospital uh, for our family. So I've diverted a lot. So the reason why I was telling you that is because <coughs> our birth plan uh, with Dr. Raj was once I get to 38 weeks pregnant, I was supposed to check in, in the hospital. Um, they were supposed to do inject me with steroids to make sure he didn't want to risk me giving birth and he's not sure if the baby's lungs had fully developed so he had to inject me with steroids then they will monitor the sugar levels for two days then induce labor so for me uh, we had calculated that would be like spending five days four to five days in the hospital so um once i turned 38 weeks that was our birth plan uh, we had to follow speed to 38 weeks so that morning at 9 a.m the contraction started so me in my head was like ah these are braxton hicks because they're not that painful but they were they came um they were a lot but not regular you get what i said because if they were regular i'd have gone to hospital so they were a lot but they're not regular so i was like ah you know when they become regular i will go to hospital so i was monitoring them in my phone um seeing the intervals and um whatever the pain level i was just i was just listening to my body the entire day so we even managed to go to a family event so we went for a family event in the afternoon we spent the day there we left at around eight and still the contractions were really a lot but then i knew i may be in labor but i just put it like in uh, at the back of my mind because the contractions are not painful they're just the same level as braxton hicks you know braxton hicks you can do anything you can i usually, usually even used to drive um when i get the braxton hicks contractions they aren't that bad for me so uh speed forward to 8 a.m we left the family event we came home my hubby was a bit tired so he slept for me i just started watching something there's something i was watching then i video chatted with my sisters so when i was video chatting with my sisters one of my sisters was like but they do you know you're in labor when day you in labor by the way so please go to hospital i was like ah so i'll shower then listen to my body then um i'll go to hospital so um <coughs> at around 10 i have a bit of um congestion so about at around 10 10 30 p.m in the evening i went and showered um and i decided you know what let me take a nap let me also sleep so what triggered me to go to the hospital was i couldn't nap at around 11 i was like where the contractions became at a bit more painful than the Braxton Hicks that I was used to or from what I was been experiencing throughout the day so I woke my hubby I was like baby we need to go to the hospital I think I'm actually in labor like these contractions now are painful I can't even nap so he woke up we got ready and um I had already shot so I just had a dinner on I just put a sweater and we left so uh, we got to the hospital, they admitted us. Uh, Dr. Raj had already written for me instructions on um, I just give the head nurse when I get to the hospital and they'll sort me out on what he wanted them to do to take care of me. So we were admitted at around um, 12.30 in the morning. Uh, they did the first checkup that they usually do. They check for dil dilation, they check for the baby's heartbeat. You know, the monitor they put around your, your belly to monitor the contractions, they had the baby's heartbeat, and um, they did the blood pressure uh, checkup and also how far I, I had dilated. I was at zero. But then I was at zero, no dilation, no nothing. Oh, my water didn't break. By the, the, the entire time I'm telling this story, my water didn't break. The only thing I had was the show discharge what they call it show discharge you can google that let me not be let me not be too tmi so you can google if you don't know so that's the only thing i had in the morning now um fast forward i think the doctor they monitored for like an hour and a half um so the doctor came in and i'll write the name of this doctor i'll call and be shy and ask is my baby 
so he's not fully awake um let me just try and rush this um so the, i'll write the name of the doctor that sorted us out um i think i was in too much pain to 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 really catch her name and everything so i'll write it down because she was really amazing she's the best doctor i've ever come across so she came in took her, um my history again um told me if i needed painkillers i should ask for them and um she asked me if i wanted epidural that was the plan by the way if i was to do normal delivery i was to do epidural and then um she she said she'll come back to check on me by then you know she's ha he's having those cries that they cry then they go back to sleep they cry they go back to sleep yeah so at around 2 a.m um the contractions got really worse um, really bad for me so what I did is I asked for painkiller so they gave me that injection the Thai injection um, it helped for like an hour it made me a bit high so I slept for like an hour at least this whole time with them my hubby was with me um, during the contractions I was just grabbing but they never had the like the back pain where you needed to be rubbed um, at the back I never experienced that by the way for me it was just the contractions the 30 seconds I was like really holding on to him um, and then when they're over I'll be like okay and then um, at around so I slept I think for like an hour and a half so at around uh, 5 or is it 4, no at around 5 a.m. they brought us hot cocoa and then um, the nurse came in to also monitor the baby's heartbeat and um, what is it called, blood pressure. So they didn't check for dilation again if I had dilated, they didn't check for that. So the doctor came, so I had my cup of cocoa, they changed the beddings, they got me a gown, a fresh gown, towels, toilet, kit and everything. So at that point I told my hubby, you go to the car and try and nap. I gave him like a break, you go and nap because me have to go shower. So the doctor came in, um, asked me how I was doing, I was just like the contractions are a bit painful, ni ni ni. So she was like at a... Uh, you take a shower then after you shower just walk around the hospital and then um i'll come and check on you again so i was like sour um so i took my hot cocoa as, as they were changing the bed sheet so i decided to shower immediately things escalated so quickly that you have this knowledge before you get uh, you have this knowledge you've done your research about um contractions and everything but at that moment it all disappeared so while i was showering i couldn't get past doing anything i'm trying to soap my towel pain i'm trying to wash my face pain i'm trying to rinse my face pain so for me it didn't even hit me that these things are now one minute apart it didn't hit me at all plus let me tell you guys something i was not expecting to go to do normal delivery by the way if um anyone who's close to me knows this i was not expecting to do normal delivery because i had lived with this um rumor that if you are if you are size three and below there's no way you are capable of doing normal delivery and the person who told me is told me this is actually a nurse and i can't remember which hospital but there's a nurse who had told me that ah you there's, there's a possibility you won't be able to do to do normal delivery so even my sisters they were not able to do normal delivery so for me in my head i was like ah minimum to us yes i knew i had done my research on cs but i had done zero research on normal delivery i was a hundred percent sure this is the way i'm doing normal delivery at the back of my mind i know i, I it just didn't hit me that these contractions are one minute apart and I'm actually, you know, the baby is there, the baby is coming. So me, I finished showering with uh, all that pain. I went um, went back to the room, put my gown on. This time I'm alone. Remember, my hubby has gone downstairs, has gone to the parking lot to sleep. So <coughs> I put on my gown. So the moment I decided to oil my body, I was like, ah, 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 ah. I think my body was like, woman, listen, you need to go to the delivery room now. So I just crawled to the 
and open the door. The good thing about Tempisha, the moment you just open the door, the nurses are on the corridors. So I opened the door, the nurse came in, like, at I, I told him, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in pain, I'm, I'm not doing good. So she was like, I don't think she took me that. that there's one nurse that our blood didn't mix. I think she just came for the morning, uh, for the next day shift. She, okay, let me just not talk about her so she told me to lie on the bed and um she looked at me she was like Ati, this is just show but by then i was bleeding so she was like Ati, this is just show i'm like what do you mean this is show uh, as in i don't think she took me seriously so i had to get out of my bed find my phone i didn't know where my phone was by the way so if because even the um, the bell thing i didn't even know where it was so that i can call you know um for help or anything so i had to find my phone and call my gosh my porridge and call my hubby so it's like baby you need to get back here um just come i just told him babe, just come 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 so he came i was like find me a doctor i don't think this nurse is taking me seriously so um, the doctor came after like two minutes or something, but then it felt like a decade. So she came, she's like uh, with the head nurse, the head, but then the head nurse I found, the one who admitted us was a male, um, that to at 12 a.m. he was really, really nice. He was really kind, he was really, you know, you don't expect nurses to be that kind, but Mpisha nurses, Mpisha nurses, they're just the best, let me tell you guys. So let me just go sort my baby. So I've just picked him. Let me change his diaper as we talk. Also, guys, unfortunately, um, I have some bad news for you. Uh, we won't be sharing. I won't be sharing my babies, my baby on this channel, or on Instagram or on social media. It's just a decision we've made with my happy to just um respect his privacy if he wants to be on social media that will be his decision he's the one who's going to put himself on social media not us so we've decided not to go that path so you might be hearing him but um seeing him won't be possible <coughs> Change the diaper first, then we can. Nya, nya. Let's change the diaper. <coughs> Someone doesn't like his diaper changed. I don't like your diaper changed. Have we put put? We put put enough. So um, my hubby came um called the doctor. The doctor came with the head nurse. The one I told you was really really nice. So they checked on me even before she like checked for dilation and everything. She was like, whoa, let's go to the delivery room now. So even then it hadn't synced. That they're actually telling me to go to the delivery room guys <laughs> so um we went to the delivery room remember i didn't do any research when it came to normal birth delivery i didn't know how to push guys i didn't know i was being taught in the delivery room on how to push i did zero research on that so in the delivery room i wasted the first two contractions because i didn't know what i was doing i was screaming so the moment you scream it means you're not pushing um wait don't so on me don't so so on me <laughs> no don't so so on mommy wait for daddy you so so on daddy so This one is going to so so on him. Can't speed on me. <laughs> this sweet boy of mine. Oh. 
or we in the delivery room so i wasted like the first um two contractions because like i had told you guys i didn't do any research i didn't know um how i was supposed to push so um the first two contractions i was screaming in pain um so the doctor was like when they just listen to me um i want you to to when the contractions come you're supposed to hold for just a few seconds then you push and then you push so my hubby was like behind me so when the contractions come he would like lift me um at an angle he would hold me like okay i don't know how to explain it but there's a way he was told to hold me then you're supposed to look at your navel um you're supposed to look at your navel as you now push so what she was actually telling me was to poop not to push so that way that way you can actually um i don't know for me i felt so much pressure i just wanted to um poop not actually to just push i just wanted to poop but i didn't poop not that pooping is a bad thing during the delivery actually actually you're told the more you try to hold not to poop the more you'll stay there in the delivery room trying to push out so if you feel like pooping poop please just poop so um in that now after the second contraction i was like you know what i need to listen to what the doctor is telling me because if i don't listen to her we will stay here for long so i just took a breath um asked her again what am i supposed to do i repeated back to make sure i understood what she said and then um the contraction came the next two contractions we were done i had pushed the baby and we were done um so basically just listen to your doctor but they always listen to your doctor take a just take a second and just breathe and listen to what she's telling you unless you've done this a million times you know what to do in the delivery room then go ahead but for some of us for the new moms especially for us who are not expecting to do normal delivery at all so for me um all i wanted to say the reason why for me this was like a testimony is because everyone i was telling this story was like with him you had a hebrew birth and for me that is what i also saw for me the the labor and the delivery was just too fast it was quick it was not as painful as um i thought it would be so everyone was telling me but then you had a hebrew birth and i remember reading on my comment section every time i posted a video everyone was like we pray that you have a hebrew birth we pray that you have a safe delivery we pray that you have a hebrew birth and i was like these are my subscribers your prayers i remember reading all those prayers in the comment section and everyone almost everyone was like most of you are praying that i have a hebrew woman bath and i was like oh gosh this actually happened guys so i just wanted to say thank you thank you thank you so much for those who prayed for me and oh gosh I, I, I don't even know what to tell you guys for me it's such a blessing to have such a um a group of subscribers like you guys and i don't know okay let me not tear up right now my my hormones are also everywhere so i don't want to tear up but just i just wanted to say thank you guys for your prayers um clearly they went a long way for me um so what happened by 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 i think 7 30 in the morning i i think around 7 30 is when i gave birth at around we didn't even have time to tell like our family i think the only people who knew i was in hospital were my sisters because you know we had chatted with them before um i left for the hospital so um they're the only people who knew i actually went to the hospital we didn't have time to even tell people i had gone to the hospital so by the time the next morning 7 30 a.m we were calling people to tell them about the hospital i had already delivered the baby but then the other thing um i really loved about ambisha is um immediately after delivery they take the baby to the nursery but then i didn't see my baby till like afternoon and i'm the one who actually requested to go see my baby i mean for the baby to be brought to me they actually take care of your baby they just let you take a breath first before they bring you the baby to handle yourself so they took the baby to the nursery to the warmer 
um, dressed him, fed him, um, they usually feed him like a bit of formula, just kidogo. But then I didn't have any breast milk, I just had the col it's called colostrum or something. Um, but it wasn't also much, it was just one boob that was um, giving out the, the colostrum, the, the water. It, it looks watery, that one. So um, I went back to the room, ate my breakfast. Um, so visitors, all visitors came when the baby was in the nursery. Um, then I think after lunch, I ate lunch. Then now, no, I slept. I actually slept. I slept for a while. Then um, ate lunch. Then now that's when I went and took the baby from the nursery. <laughs> so that's a good thing. They actually take really good care of your baby. Um, even uh, washing the baby, they'll be like the next morning they came, took the baby washed him they'll ask if you want to go and see how you, um they're washing the baby you can actually go anytime to the nursery it's not resist restricted by the way so at night um the doctor came and was like are you ready to go home tomorrow i'm like yeah what am i doing in the hospital so i was discharged the next day so it's like at the next day i'm going to discharge you you go you're okay um just uh come back after two weeks what 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 so um the next day, that's when now my OBGYN came. Uh, but then my OBGYN, Dr. Raj was like, we are doing normal delivery, Maggie. I want you to walk. I want you to walk. And I think the maximum I've ever walked in a day was four kilometers, guys. But the thing that really helped me was how active I was during my pregnancy. Um, I was really active with they going to work, walking, that walking um, to the parking lot to work and back. I would walk around the office also. Uh, my boss was also very persistent on me walking. She would remind me a million times. Every time I went to her office, she was like, how many steps have you walked today? Um, everyone around me was just like, walk, 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 walk. Um, also, the activities I used to do, the cleaning around the house, uh, by then I still didn't have a house help. So the cleaning around the house should be, uh, really helped me a lot in being active and that's what actually we came to discover afterwards. That's what helped me have also a very smooth delivery. I'll say it was a smooth delivery. Let me just say that. So it really caught me off guard after delivery was the night sweats. The night sweats have really taken a toll on me because um, in a night I usually change like three pages. I change my pages like three times in a night. So um, those are the only, that is the one thing that really caught me off guard in this whole thing because I never expected it to be that bad. It's like my, my, my pages are usually really, really soaked in sweat by the way so that is what has given me the congestion you're hearing right now because by the time i wake up change you know a bit of cold has entered um your chest just a bit so um but the if i've i've just found a way i've, I've found a way around it uh, i found a way of keeping warm throughout the night of keeping warm as i breastfeed just wear a sweater on top of your pjs and pull it up it will protect your chest from any cold you may experience you may also put on a scarf but a scarf might be a bit uncomfortable so a sweater is uh, much better for you hey and no one told me about okay baby boys these people they will breastfeed you dry dry Woo. like tonight um he breastfed both both boobs um and they were both really really full so that's like 200 ml in one feeding yes this tiny boy of mine mm -hmm. that is my story you guys um even if you're expecting to do normal delivery please do your research on cs if you're expecting to go CS, please do your research on normal delivery. Uh, don't be like me who's being taught things in the hospital. Um, so just have a, what is it called? An open mind and expect anything. When it comes to birth delivery, just expect anything by the way. Um, 
even if it's your second or third baby you may have done all of them no more than the last one um things become a bit complicated so just do your research on uh, either of them so this is it for this video guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your prayers i truly truly appreciate um i wish i could just gift you all like a bouquet of flowers and chocolates so just to say thank you thank you so much for your prayers they truly went um very far when it came to my delivery for the baby and i'm truly grateful by the guys truly grateful so that is what i wanted to share with you guys today pray be active listen to your doctors get a good doctor and listen to your doctors